and just really let go and forgive yeah. that the healing comes. You can't Without even any expectations. Without any expectations. And the moment you find your peace and unconditional love is what you gave him, and he didn't believe you could give unconditional love. And I, I still love. don't have any expectation if his approach changes in time when he gets better. Yeah, don't and expect. You won't no, be disappointed. No, no. <laughs> As Guru Dev says, do don't make an appointment or you'll be disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> you know, do everything because of the joy of it, because you want to, because ultimately at the end of your life, you have to answer to yourself. And end of the day, you have to answer to yourself. You have to live in your own mind. And that's where everything festers. And it's no point blaming other people, because even when you're blaming them, you still have to live in your own mind with the blame. And the blame is uncomfortable. It takes you from your peace. So spiritual knowledge is really so very simple. It comes in forgiveness. It comes in acceptance. You know, this is why Master Shivananda, which I repeat again and again, he says, bear insult, bear injury, highest sadhana, highest practice. Because if you can do that, and then you transcend your pain and your hurt, just by trying to do that, you will transcend your pain and your hurt. Because the moment forgiveness comes in, you become free. You set yourself free. While you're angry, you're in a prison. You've allowed somebody else to lock you up. And then we keep spending an entire life blaming. And you can blame as much as you want. What will you achieve at the end of the day? And that's the question that the yoga science say. When you totally forgive, you become free. And what are we looking for in yoga? To be free while we're living. And I keep telling people, when you forgive last moment at your deathbed, no use. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. You want to be free while you're here, while you're living. You want to enjoy life without guilt, without anguish, you know? Like you said, very clearly in your story, which is so beautiful. Hello, Kirsty, nice to see you. You know, in your story, which is so beautiful, because you had four years of what we called, in the yogic science, tapas. For those who don't know, what does tapas mean? Accepting pain and not causing it in return. And when you do that, over a period of time, that time well, you're burning. You're actually burning. Because when you accept pain and you don't hit back, you burn up. You get so, I want to cause pain back. But in the beginning, you burn up. But after a while, when you just hold back, what is yoga? Ah, Vanessa, we've just done the course. You remember? <laughs> My stuff is yoga. Yoga is chitta vritti nirodha. The restraint. When you restrain from hitting back, it burns you. But over a period of time, you know, and time we don't know how long it takes, no expectation. If you don't fight back and you don't throw something back and you learn, Sri Patanjali tells you sometimes you walk away or you just bear and suck, bear injury. The choice is yours, but when you don't hit back over a period of time, there's no desire to hit back. There's no desire to hit, and that's your freedom. You become free from somebody else's hold on you. And your story shows you've gone four years of burning to fine tune, to fine tune that letting go. And when you are finally ready, look at the timing. Look at the timing. I mean, it's very, very perfect. The universe plan is very perfect. It waited till you, towards the end of your yoga course, when you had the techniques and the science, he fell in. That was your biggie to show whether you could bear insult, bear injury, and return it with love. That's the hardest thing to do. So he had to fall ill, very ill, to see that there was something beautiful in you and that remember the good times he had with you. And both of you didn't need to live in that anger because you can't sell your house anyway. So well, something as well at the very, very last minute 
when we really thought we'd surrender to the fact, well, next month, I don't know what will happen with the mortgage payments because they were all changing. Uh, on the very, very last day, our house, our flat in, in Scotland sold. Okay, so great. So it gave us this sort of breather. And it came naturally. I mean, I didn't, you know, somehow I expected that whatever had to happen would happen. But I needed to be there. And, you know, I felt that the universe obviously was there just facilitating the fact Absolutely. that we could go through this period. And what does it say about Ahimsa? To want practicing non-violence. Look how exact this science is. All hostilities cease. What happened? We gave you, sold your, your flat in Scotland to ease things up for you. It's really an exact science when you watch it in people's lives. But you have to practice it. And you've been practicing it. And the benefits will come to you. You know, I've seen, now I look at Sarah today and I looked at Sarah before the summer. I see, I didn't even recognize her walking in. I said, is that Sarah? Uh, whatever she's been doing over the summer, it's working. <laughs> she's a different human being. Energy, everything is like you dropped off years of baggage. You know, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's wonderful to see when people do that. Because you see, she doesn't even need to tell me because it's so visible freedom in a person. It is so visible. The whole face shines. The whole uh, you know, body language changes. You know, when you're in anger, when you're in fear, even a little of death or anything or anguish with a person, you cannot shine. You cannot be in that flow of, you know, what do they call that, that spiritual energy, the Lord of Love. It's really very simple. But it takes us a long time to understand the golden rules. And this is why, like I said, it's my passion to spread it as much as possible so more people on this earth can find their peace and find their joy. So as soon as you have your story, go tell thousands. You don't need to be a Raj Yoga teacher to serve the world. But if you're giving very expensive you know, advice about any situation, just be very careful that it's not coming from a personal place, but a place of neutrality. Don't take sides, in other words. You have to be extremely fair. You got it? So if somebody you know and love is suffering, don't go by your own books what they should do, but tell them how to achieve the highest. You get them to make the decision. How do you get them to make the decision? By telling them truthfully. If you stay in anger, you'll be making the wrong decision. Isn't that simple? Anybody angry make the right decision? Always the wrong. It was boom, cut, finish. But if you make a decision in peace, even if it's boom, cut, finish, it's very gentle. The universe likes it. And then both people can go off in peace on their own path. Do you see? You have to finish stories. Otherwise, it's karmic. It carries on from generation to generation, it carries on. Why simply again, you see it in the Bible, you know, the children will suffer the father's sins. What does that mean? It just means they learn from their parents, they see the example of the parents and they copy. That's all it means. And if they copy, they will suffer the same obstacle. So what we are telling ch children, don't imitate if it's wrong, there is a way out. We're all children. There is a way out. There's another way to think to free you. There's another way to be happy. Don't keep that cycle turning from generation to generation. Eventually, anything sparks people off. And then what happens? It creates world wars because all the people that are ruling the world are full of anger. Or greed, or one of those. <laughs> greed is a big one in our our world now. This is why there are so many wars. All greed. Again, what does Sri Patanjali tell us about greed? Hmm? To one who practices non-greed, all wealth comes. Hmm? Look at all the people that practice greed in the last 15, 20, all starting to self-destruct. Just look around you. Even the guy who got the huge uh, payoff from BBC, look how much is going on. Why did he get so? Do you see? It's, you cannot escape greed. You cannot escape. 
A simple scientific rule of cause and effect. It is the universal law. Cause and effect. We all know that. You sow a seed, you reap a tree. How do you, that the secret is in how you water it to get the quality out of it. That's the secret. How you look after it. You know, I may sow a seed and look after it beautifully. Somebody else sow a seed, not bother with it. So you see, that is the difference. This is the yoga science. The life we have is the same. The opportunities are the same. And that way no one is better than anybody else. The spirit in you is the same spirit in me, the energy. The soul is, is really ruled by our mind. And our minds are so controlled by society. We've given everything away. And we're not free. And this is the yogic science. Forget it. Get your strength back. You are already free. Why have you given it away? Why have you given your freedom? And look how you, you say you are free. You may have lots of money. You may have a nice car. But are you happy? How many people do you see really peaceful and happy? I see only a handful. And those are the ones that I see that are really peaceful and happy. Uh, people who understand the science and live very freely and very happily. Because they do all the things, serve, love, give, purify, meditate, realize. It's not that bad things don't happen to them. Horrible things happen to them. My poor friend Ula, she had a summer that you've never seen one thing after another. You know, one thing after another, non-stop. And she's come out smiling. First, the first thing, why is this happening? I said, do not say question. <laughs> why, what did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong. It is the way it is. Remember, it is the way it is. If you need to learn a lesson from it, it will come out. But don't go, why this, why, I'm going, ah, 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 stress, it's me, I'm not good enough, am I too controlling, do you have to, no, it's the way it is. I don't know why this, you're a wonderful human being, you really are, you've really made all the amends, amendments you needed in your life. Now things happen, just sit tight, just sit tight and ride the tidal wave. And she has, I spoke to her yesterday, still going through it, but now there's a sense of not, non which is the highest lesson to learn. Again, yeah. very difficult. You can say, I'm not attached. I'm not attached. When something goes wrong for a long time, one after another, you come to a point when you say, you know what? What else can go wrong? I give up. And that, I will tell her, is her lesson. And she's learned it. I didn't tell her that yesterday. She should tell her. It's so difficult to learn. You should, you know what? This person suffering, I can't do anything about this one, can't do it. My house got flooded, I just repair it. Just solution, solution, solution. A very good friend, you know, for so many years did something so untruthful. I got so hurt. And I thought, what for? Called her in, forgave her, she cried, apologized, done. Do you see? Very quickly things flow in and out when you allow, when you apply these teachings. Her thing was non-attachment to the anger, non-attachment to her home, because that flooded, <laughs> you know, while she was in Sweden. And, you know, one thing after another, somebody hacked into her bank account. You know, wow, it was just non-stop. So it's an all in two, sh and I told her, you know, I think the universe loves you because all happened within two short months. These things can drag on for years, but because of your knowledge and the way you are tending to it, things are quickly going to be wiped out, quickly going to be sorted. But most important, whether it's sorted or whether it's, it looks like it is, you have achieved freedom in pain and when everything has gone wrong for you, you are at peace. And you can even think of doing good when you're in peace, like forgiving the person who, who hurt her so badly, and like bringing beautiful flowers to the person in the bank who noticed something was wrong with her account. Do you know? And she's going through so much, and she still can think of doing good to other people. Do you see? That's how it works. And this is, this is, this is the wonder of this science, you see? 
That's why when you know it by heart, and you study it, and you study it, and you study it, and you study it, and it becomes ingrained. Even if you take one thing, forgiveness, one thing, forget about everything else, you see your life change. You become lighter. We like to hang on to old stories. How many times have I said, said it? Drop them. Simply drop them. It's not so easy, right? This is why the practice of meditation. This is why the practice of non-violence. This is the practice of breathing. Because when the anger comes up, <gasps> take a deep breath before you do anything. Just take a deep breath. And of course, again, Sri Patanjali tells us in the yoga science, by the practice of pranayama, look how well you know it, the veil over the inner light is destroyed. So when you're getting so angry, right, and you take a few deep breaths, you come right down. And you say, oh my God, why am I giving this so much energy. So the bells immediately dropped, right? Immediately dropped. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm really light. Why am I spending so much time on darkness? Why am I spending so much time on darkness when I'm really light itself? And what is going to leave my body when I die is, is, is me and my body staying behind. Constantly remember that. So who am I? 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 But there is the plan on how to get there. The map. Dealing with your emotions is the most important thing because why do you think I want to seek the highest? I want to be enlightened. I want to go into nirvana and samadhi and I can tell you I'm psychic, I can tell you all that, I can do this, I can do that. What is the point of any of it if you can't be happy in your own life? Waste of energy, waste of time, because if you are not peaceful and you can't enjoy your home that you are given, what's the point of life? The friends you are given, because you're constantly like this, so your friends come, you miss the day, you miss you miss living, literally living in the light and living in the spirit. You miss it. It passes you. One day in your life, wasted. When it could be so intensely beautiful and joyful and so simple. And so simple to be happy. So this is most, so I always tell people, learn first how to deal with your own emotions. You know, be totally truthful. Strip yourself up. You know, what is my weakness? What is my weakness? What are my best attributes? Spend more time on that which is my best attributes and less time on my weakness. It's an easier way. But if your weakness is too powerful, too powerful, if you're too emotional, you're too emotional in a certain way, then you really have to take that emotion and really work on it as a scientist. In the sense that it doesn't belong to me. This emotion has come to me, you know. But it, it, I don't feel comfortable with it. If I don't feel comfortable with this emotion, it means it doesn't belong to me. Otherwise, you'd be comfortable being angry, wouldn't you? Well, who's comfortable being angry? I haven't seen one person who's... They say, oh, that person... But look at their body. Look at the body language. They're lying to themselves. Oh, I wish him bad. Look at the body language. It, it really comes back to you. It just comes and hits you. So study the emotion. And if it's too powerful for you, maybe it's emotion like weakness. You know, I see many today, people today, also a big problem is weakness. They don't have the courage to be themselves. They don't have the courage. Too frightened. And I said, what are you going to spend the whole of your life not knowing who you are? What a waste of time. So how do you develop strengths? Only by facing your fears. There's no other way. You can't run away. You have to face them. You can make all the excuse, like in Ramakrishna's story, you know, oh, because, you know, I don't want to say anything. I'll keep it to myself. I don't want to hurt anyone. What a lot of rubbish. 
you haven't reached that kind of transcendental state to totally forgive. You're just being a weak, weakling because you don't dare say what you're thinking. There are many layers to our human personality and emotions. Many. Arjuna had to fight a war, which he didn't want to fight, in order to find the highest in him. We are all given battlefields, all of us. Nobody's exempt. Have you noticed? Have you noticed one person who doesn't have to go through some kind of battle in their life? I don't even know why. Everybody, and even if they say they don't, they have battles. They can say, oh, I have battles and I've transcended them. That's fine, that's great, that's wonderful. They don't need the yoga signs. Because so you're trying to think, no big deal, no big deal. You're still joyful, still happy. Then you've transcended it. But most people get so involved. So ask yourself, ask yourself your emotions, you know. What do you? What is your weakness in your emotional field first? What do you do? Are you constantly blaming people? Are you constantly desiring things that you can't have? You know, it could be something like strong desires that drive you nuts. <laughs> I want, I want, I want, I want. They can't think of anything. You know, so how many times I've heard people say, Oh, I want a partner, I want a partner, I want a partner, I want... The more they want, the worse it goes. How come I haven't found anybody? Because you're just so desperate that the universe is... That anybody who comes near you is scared, you frighten them away. Because <laughs> maybe they're not ready for this, you know, they just want a friend and maybe you're just... Do you know what I'm saying? And I said, oh, but Nandi, it's not fair, I'm meditating. I'm like, you meditate all you want, but the desire is so strong that you're meditating on the desire. There's no freedom from that desire to. Do you see? You're caught in a loop. You're caught in a loop. So how do you get out of the loop? And the <coughs> Bhagavad Gita says, by thinking about the highest. It's the only way up. What is the highest? See the divine in, in, in everyone. Oh, difficult to see. How do I do that? So then Amas tells us, gives us a great solution. Service. Service. Don't focus on yourself. Don't focus on my needs and my wants. Start to train your mind to focus elsewhere. You know, even in your own home. How can I make my home a happier home today? And if you can't and you try and try and try, then you come to work. And say, how can I make my workplace happy? How can I inspire? How can I lift hearts? How can I raise spirits where I am? You bring your attention somewhere else. Otherwise you get stuck in your desires and they eat you up. Her desire to leave the home was there for four years, but she couldn't. Something stopped her. So what did she do? She went for the highest knowledge. And in that highest knowledge, things are falling into place by itself. Do you see what I'm saying? And at least she got distracted with the course, at least for that one year, she distract herself, right? And then everything starts, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. What did uh, the Japanese girl, I mean, the, that we met, who took the course with me, she's lovely, she's a counselor, and she's been like studying, she, she knows the whole Bhagavad Gita, etc., etc. And lovely, very deep. You can see she said she had been studying it for 25 years. She only looked like 20 something. And she said she was 40s too. Or three. No, no, much more. She was 40, 40. Four? Yeah, something like that. Oh, she looked like 22 yeah, years old. <laughs> and she'd been doing, but very humble. Very humble. And when she got the sutra, she said, it's like all the chicks saw pieces for years suddenly starting to come together. And then she said, that's why I haven't been able to help people in, in, in my work. I see they get better for a little while and then they get back to the same problem again. So I said, what, what sutra? What did you learn? And she said, the one that said pain, you know, the mind, or the thoughts, a bit, they're either painful or painless. But she said, when you said that Swami Satchitananda said to change it to selfish or selfless, 
She said, something clicked. My patients don't get better because they're all selfish. <laughs> Simply, so she said, can I apply it in my psychology? I said, absolutely, that's why you're taking the course. Go change them all now. So I'm going to get, give them more appointments, but this time I'm going to say, um, problem is you're always thinking about you, and I've been encouraging you as a psychologist and a counselor, encouraging them, and they're not better. You know, it was, she was telling you that they're not better. They get better for one or two weeks and they're back to, but she said, if we can use the selfless key, I can teach them how to get better. One wow. of us an experiment, write a book about it and let me know. I'm sure she will, she's so deep, huh? You can see she's working for many years and this was just, you know, just what she needed to continue the work that you could see she's divinely been given work to do. You know, you can feel it in people, in whichever field, but we all have been. We just have to know which field we are in and perfect it. If you're working in it. Ah, and then I met Aunt Santel. Santel, I must tell you about Santel because I said I would use his story and he said it's okay. Santel is a wonderful disciple of Swami Sachitananda. You used to know him when he was in uh, Sri Lanka, you know, in Pandi Ashram. Now, Santel was a very simple boy from a very simple family. Um, and he went to India from Sri Lanka to get a job because he couldn't get a job in Sri Lanka. He did so well as it, at his job, he kept on getting promoted and promoted and promoted. Till now today, he, with a partner, they've opened their own business and it's in shipping. It's in shipping. They ship all over the world with big... He's always traveling back and forth. And uh, when I was leaving, Wissinto was so busy, he happened to be in England at the same time. I was there, but we couldn't meet because we were both too busy, so our, our time never met. But he came to Heathrow Airport at 9 o'clock in the morning on the morning, Sunday morning when I was coming home. And we said, we'll go to the airport early and we'll meet. And this is where he was saying, he said he had a big meeting, big businessman, right? And he said, you know, Nandi, what I've, I've learned, a few lessons that he would say, I've learned that my part is to be big businessman because I am capable of making big money to help many people. I said, great, because the first thing I asked him is, are you happy in your job? So much traveling, so love it. Hmm? And he said, and I can help so many people. He's, he's opened a school in uh, India near Pondicherry. He looks after 200 orphans. And then now he's trying to build them a farm. He's also going to renovate the candy ashram on his own. Doesn't matter, he said. He doesn't need to raise money. He's got the money. He'll pay for it, renovate it, so people can use it for free. Wonderful. And then he said, you know, and somebody and, and a friend asked, and how did you get into it? He said, I don't know. I just trusted the divine. I just worked really hard and put all that I learned from my guru into my work. And then he said, you know, yesterday was really amazing. He said, I was sitting at this board meeting with all these top people from top, you know, uh, retail outlets, because he does shipping, right? All these retail outlets, and all looking for a solution. And he said, all with their reports and, you know, business plans, he said, I never write any of that. And work by the highest instinct. And I said, thank God, in business, you're finding instinct. It's not about all these, you know, I've seen so many businessmen, all these reports, all, the, all go to the bin, you know, and then they all argue over one list little sentence, and they spend six months. By the time they get to agree on the business report, opportunity is lost. Somebody else has stolen the idea. Hmm? I've seen it happen so many times. Anyway, he said, I work by instinct. He said, yesterday, um, four suggestions came from my mouth that, that were quite incredible, but you don't know where they came from. And in my mind, I said, wow, divine, thank you for using me. Do you see, you even work it in business. And I said to him, can I, can I tell people this? Because people think that you can only have to be a yoga teacher to apply this philosophy. Rubbish! You know, I said, if I can use your story, and then Paddy, who, Paddy is another wonderful gentleman, 
pa, uh, Janaki Jenny, some of you met her. She did Sonia Suma's course. Her partner is the one who printed all the Divine Grace books for me. That all the money is going to charity. He refused to take a penny from me. Refused. He said he just wants the book out and people to grow from it and all money should go to charity. So Paddy, who is Janaki's, who does not practice yoga as such, practices the greatest yoga. Look at the generosity of spirit. And he's going through, he has a huge factory. He's going through very difficult times in printing. You know, everything is internet now, right? But his first thing, over the last three years, you know, he's been saying, I can't let my stuff down. I have to go and find business. And he does it the old-fashioned way. From uh, people to people, to not all the business by internet, by personal contact, with friendliness towards, you know, friendliness towards the happy, works with people with love. What was his intention? That his star should all be fed every day because they have families to feed. He's not interested in anything else. That's his goal. Look at the highest goal. If anything happens to me, I mean, if it has to happen, total surrender. It'll happen. I'll have to let them go. But I will work to every single breath to make sure that I can give them a job for as long as I can. Do you know that is so honorable? And you know, these, uh, and it's the first time he attended my talks actually, this trip, because I've been speaking there. You know, Patty, what are you doing attending my talk? You know, <laughs> he did two talks, so I was really quite happy to see him there. I said, You live it. Do you know you live it? And he says his goal is also to keep his partner, John Cousy, who's been with for 16 years, and brought up her two girls as well, to keep her because she makes my life. She serves so many people that if I don't look after her, then how is she going to serve and so many people? Little does he know how good he's doing himself. She keeps, he keeps saying she's the yogi. I said, no, Patty, you are the yogi too. You both are. And, and the generosity of spirit, I was giving a talk, and uh, we didn't expect so many people to come, and everybody is stayed long, because there are lots of questions, and I don't see them often, so. Um, Johnny came, I don't know, it was like Jesus feeding the multitude. They kept on giving, everybody went down, she gave everybody dolls, samosas, rice, did you manage to be feed so many when only five of us was five or six of us were staying for dinner? She said, you know, I don't know why, but Bab's mom brought a pot of dal for today and tomorrow. So I thought, let's feed everyone. Do you know that generosity of spirit, that, that kindness, that flow of energy? I saw in that household. No wonder the gods bless that household. And they're happy people. Everybody's so grateful to them. Said, oh, no, no, I have to thank you because you are giving people knowledge. And I have to thank you because you are feeding them when they're hungry. So it's a perfect flow. So what I'm trying to say is yoga in its highest form is not in the classroom. The techniques are not there. Yoga in its highest form is the way you live your life. The way you live your life. And now we're starting this little group, friends of SIS, and they're going to try to build this feeling into the community. Thank you for those who volunteer. Hmm? Slowly, it'll take us time, but we're at least making a step to help our community. So many lonely people. And somebody said to me when I said, I don't know who it was that used to live in Sotokwala, who's moved to England. I said, oh, Sotokwala is a place full of lonely people. Maybe that's why God sent you there. I said, yeah, because I was never li looking to live here. <laughs> I was thinking outside as the fauna, you know, want a more ordinary, average place to be. So, you know, everybody feels welcome. So they said, oh, lots of lonely, very good, lonely, sad people. I thought, what an impression of this place. Huh? So, but many people with, with intelligence and great knowledge that they could now kind of take it and perfect it into service. Hmm? So these are the little things that we have as yogis, as people who are yogis, need to perfect in ourselves.
question anything you want to ask, anything you want to say. Hmm? Anything at all. See, this is the highest good we have to do now. And it's every day. Hmm? It's every day. Start simply by a smile. <laughs> That's the simplest thing to start with. Look at your face in the mirror and say, do I smile every day? Hmm? Can I let this boy just ran to me? Melanie, I'm home. What do you want to do? You just want to do this back, right? Thank you for the chocolate, by the way. I should want it to share with everybody. Maybe we'll bring it up later and share with everybody. So, first, the first thing is, do you know, you have to ask yourself, do you embrace the world like this every day? Or oh, another day and complain. Simple. And that practice is the hardest practice. It's the hardest. It's such a simple practice. Do we do it? Do we embrace the morning? Do we do this every day? If you don't perfect that, forget about samadhi. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> There's not going to happen. <laughs> and please understand enlightenment and samadhi. It's not about a beam of light that comes to you and suddenly you've got nirvana. Hmm? How many people have I've met? I mean, I've only really learned this in the last few years. Because I've met so many masters that have practiced meditation for years and they still tied up in the same anguish and they have no freedom and they have no peace and when they lose a few students they get angry and they try I want students and they fight with another teacher you stole my students I said oh my god you know what my master used to say so if my student wanted to go to another teacher I would take that person there if that person is going to enlighten you go be happy but it's all about property now is anybody yours isn't it true? Have you seen that? Hmm? I call Ananda many few months ago came to me. Somebody was upset with her because one of her students went to her class. And she goes, Melanie, am I wrong? So what have you done? Is it your fault that you're a good teacher that somebody prefers you? Nothing to do. Why are you feeling guilty? This is a few years ago, whatever. And I said, why are you feeling guilty? You've done nothing wrong. They asked you to teach a class, you taught a class for them, they preferred you, is that your fault? What can you do? Freedom of spirit and thought, right? Now you know why governments get so entangled. <laughs> Everybody feels things or people belong to them, and doesn't. And why should she be made to feel bad? Because she gave a great class. Congratulations, you gave a great class. Maybe you helped to put the other person on their toes. You don't know. But you realize you can't get so attached. Nothing is yours. And this is really important. This is what all people in yoga go through. Nothing is ours. And slowly we're given these lessons on non-attachment. Practice is easy. You can meditate every day. Like I said, I've seen people meditate every day. But if you don't practice non-attachment with it, as our master said, a steel cage, a golden cage, still a cage, yeah, still a cage. You don't want to be locked in a cage. Don't swap one for the other. Get out of the steel cage, fly. Fly. And really, this is bringing, that's why today, you know, we thought, let's bring it back to, to the basics, you know, how to deal with our emotions. And I thought, you know, for the other sutras of Sri Patanjali, the second part is, unless you practice, unless you practice, you cannot understand them. So for those who want those, I thought I would organize a Saturday in a month early, like from 7 to 10, so you have the whole day free, mm -hmm. to do the more difficult sutras, if you all agree. The ones you do only when you've practiced. Because anybody walks in you, they don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So it's no point going there. 
So if you all agree, we've decided to change the format a little. Obviously, I'll sit down with the committee in October and we'll start after then. So we can give you notice for the next, for the teachers, you know, who've done the course. And I'm sure lots of people in Gibraltar have asked for it as well. Mm -hmm. But on a Tuesday, we want to keep it open. But always remember, just because you know this, it doesn't mean you have to stop going down to basics. Huh? Every practitioner has to deal with everyday life. Everyday life. The idea, you know, all the great masters, Eckhart Tolle tells you, be in the now, be in the now, be in the now. You can't be in the now unless you learn to meditate. You practice meditation. Why? Because in meditation, the mind is everywhere. Right? It's everywhere. It goes all over the place. And the practice in the beginning just to concentrate is to bring it back to one place. <laughs> right? Now you're practicing to focus. 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 As you think, it becomes. So when you learn to focus after a period of time, by itself, no attachment to when it's going to happen, you just start to notice that you're starting to focus on the moment. You're making a cup of tea, you're enjoying making it. You're drinking it, you enjoy drinking it. You're sitting on the table, oh, I'm not going to waste this morning rushing about and screaming. Let's sit down and enjoy my family for breakfast, even if it's five minutes. I'm not going to scream and shout. We're just going to sit for five minutes, and if they don't finish their breakfast, they're lost, detached. And then you can really enjoy every moment. There's, it's, life has to have stress because we live in a life. We have to have some stress. But you just make it positive stress. Negative stress will make you very, very, very So the most simple truths are the greatest pearls in spirituality. The greatest pearls, the greatest pearls, not the complicated ones. Keep it simple, keep your life simple. Really try to look at your home and your life. So many things, so many thoughts. Less things, less thoughts. If you have seven, or 10, let's say for me, yeah, 10 white tops, because sometimes when I travel, there's no time to wash, right? So if I go for 10 days, I just wear 10. When I have excess, I give it away. When I come down, I buy two more. And then if I know of 10 days, I can take 10 tops. If it's 12 days, I make sure the first two days I wash it by hand and hang it up. That's if I'm, if I'm in the same place. So you make sure life very simple. I don't have to worry. They worn out, they get yellow. I buy a new one. So I bought this because two of mine got yellow and gave it away. Do you see what I'm saying? And then you keep your, your head is no time wasted on what do I have to pack? How long is it? I got this, I got this. Do you see what I'm saying? Just simplify your, I'm, I'm talking about clothes, but I'm talking about every aspect of your life. Even if you want to write a book. Many people have gifts to write books, beautiful books. But they like got papers everywhere, so unfocused that they never get down to the book. So, so keep it simple. Make one simple idea. And every day build a chapter on that idea. Let it flow. But make it simple. But thousands of ideas. You're so I know the story I want it to be like this, now. Okay, you know that. That's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing to know what you're gonna write on. Now that just start, chapter one, what do you want to start from? When the person was young, oh, but maybe it could be this, and it could be this, and maybe it could, oh, you're never going to write your book. Do you see what I'm saying? In everything, make it simple, keep it simple, keep it basic. And when you've got the basic, okay, chapter one this, chapter two this, chapter three this, chapter, chapter ten this, then, on that chapter, you can make the flowers appear and the petals. You can grow them. Then you can have sub-chapters. But at least you start. 
everything in your life, you will see, if you make it simple, it becomes, it's, it, it, it really does grow. You know, as Santel said, and I started with his story, I work my business by instinct. Of course, sometimes we go wrong. No big deal. No big deal. It's not a big deal. But if you're so busy working for the highest good for mankind in whatever field you go through in life, you always have a period of testing. But if you're really, it's not personal gain, you will succeed. If it's personal gain, you may succeed and fall, succeed and fall, succeed and fall. But if it's not for, I want to do this so I can serve the world, you see, you may work very hard in the beginning, but when you succeed, you fly. I've seen it. If you don't fly financially, you fly with freedom. And for me, that's even better than financial freedom. Because if you have freedom, it means you're happy. It means you have enough to live on. It means you don't have to beg, steal, or borrow. You don't have excess, but you have enough. And I think, frankly, that's the best way to be. So deal with your emotions. I'd like to do a little uh, creative visualization with you, if that's okay with you, um, on your emotions, just to um, see where, yes. Sorry, I just wanted, before we get into that, um, one to share, that one thing that um, really works for me on the emotional part is what you were talking about, equanimity. Because equanimity of mind is yoga. Yeah, because, you know, with the emotions, when things go good, I always, I was up here, and when they went back, down, down there, so, you know, you taught us how to, the, the best is just to keep it balanced when things are going very well, just, that's great, and if they go very bad, well, better times will come, but without letting ourselves jump from one to the other, and that has really made a big change in me uh, because you know when you're looking for that it's always much more achieve achievable to be in this state yes than, it is than to want to be on that one or, and then you fall onto the other thank so you just that regarding is, the emotions yeah, that's absolutely correct you know when i first started yoga i realized i had very very high highs and very very low lows a very low lows. I used to do a lot of uh, production work and choreography and, you know, choreograph big shows and Mr. Walter shows and, and uh, fashion shows and things like that. And the last one we did in El Zaglietta with Credit Suisse, I remember many years ago, and it had to be the last one because it was the biggest one. And I had the fortune to continue and work with that kind of people or that's the last, I don't need this in my life anymore. And that's exactly what I did. I walked away. And that was the emotion, I remember. Because every time I used to do a production, you know, you work anybody in production, you know what I mean? You work really hard, you get there, you get so excited, and once the show is over, boom, the next day, <clears throat> you feel, I don't know, it's not a feeling of satisfaction, it's a feeling of, ah, what next? Uh, this, this kind of ego feeling, there's what did people say about it, and if you get a critique that's not so good, you get upset, and oh, what a lot of mind stuff. And I remember when I started meditation and learning equanimity of mind, the last one, which was a big fashion show at La Zaglieta, um, it was the best one we had done yet, and everybody said, oh, we want you to do the next one, da 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 da. And I came out, Okay, thank you very much. No big deal, you know, it was no big deal. Uh, I had a secret message to the divine in the last piece of choreography. It was almost saying goodbye, really. And the song I used was Brian Adams. I had all the models saying, everything I do, I do it for you. You know, they didn't know why I was using that song. <laughs> but I did, and for me that was my message, you know, to God, everything I do, I do it for you. And that was, that was my joy, 
That was my gift. It's not what people said afterwards, etc. When I saw them doing that, and nobody knew, and now I tell them so many years later. And you know, it was like, okay, I done it. I done this job you gave me. I worked really hard. I did it to the best. You know, the person who paid me for the job was happy with the job. I did everything. The models were happy. I made sure everybody got looked after. I did it to the best of my ability. I did it for you. I didn't do it for anybody else. And I remember going home the next day and being so happy to get up in the morning and feeling free. I, and no down downs, nothing. And this was brilliant for one or two weeks. And then suddenly I started to doubt. Sri Patanjali says, watch out for those doubts. Mm. Watch out for those doubts. I said, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe when I start yoga, I can't stop feeling anymore. Is my life going to be boring? What's happening to me? Have I become so detached that I'm boring? Am I never going to have this excitement? Do you know, doubt. So i very lucky I had my master alive at that time, and I called him. The states say, Good to death, what's happening to me? You know, this I'm suddenly, you know, I was just like no emotion. He said, Will you peaceful? I said, Yes, very peaceful. Then, what's your problem? <laughs> and then I said, um, Have I lost my joy then? Have I lost the joy of living? He said, No, because the feeling is so new, it's so new, it's so quiet, you think something is wrong. Give it six months, you will love it. And really, after six months, I said, why did I even have that doubt? So Sri Patanjali tells us in our, you know, our obstacles to grow, slipping from ground gain, disease, dullness, doubt. Watch out for that doubt. It's the traitor. Yeah, pardon? It's the traitor. It's the traitor. <laughs> It is the traitor, always is the traitor. I was just very lucky I had a master because let's say I let it go, then I've gone back to the same old cycle. Mm. Right? And that's why they say you need a teacher in the spiritual path. I would have gone back into the same old cycle, even mm. without realizing <clears throat> and thinking I worked so hard, I had that peace, and then the doubt took me back to the same old story again. I had a master who said, don't worry, in six months you will love this feeling. It's just the body has to accustom, the mind has to accustom to this new feeling of tranquility. It has to accustom to it. It's funny huh, how we work on such a deep emotional level, all of us, you know. And when you can see the picture clearly, then you like the equanimity of mind. Everybody's panicking, but oh, so nice to feel quiet in the noise, isn't it? It is so quiet in the noise things going on and you just stay quiet in yourself. It says, the Bhagavad Gita says, what is night, is night for the yogi, is for the wise one or the yogi, is day for everybody else. What is day for the yogi, or the wise ones, is night for everybody else. In other words, what does it mean? When you reach that stage of understanding, you start to realize that People are thinking so different from you. You see it as day and they see it as night. Understand that. Everything changes. Because you see everything the other way around. Because you start working from premise that this life is just a journey. As Santel said yesterday, and I said I'd quote him, he said the, ready, the video is already made. We just have to act it beautifully. We just have to act every minute beautifully. I loved it. I said, the video's already made as a dear. We just have to act it. <laughs> we don't act it beautifully. We keep falling and we don't like our video. Let's change it. Because we think the bad parts of the video are bad, but really the bad parts of the video are taking you to a better place. So you can understand that the video is made. You just have to accept it on all levels. Not only the good, but the bad, like you said. It's easy for everyone to accept when things are going well. The tricky part is when it's not. And that's what we spend all this time learning and growing into. So tell me, Vanessa, what have you taken from today? I have taken a lot from today. 
because um, I went to give uh, a talk at uh, the international school today and um, I followed the course uh, one week with uh, Melanie in London and it was fabulous. I really enjoyed it and uh, today we spoke, I, I went there for uh, two classes and it was 45 minutes. It was about peace and conflict and meditation and everything. We did the meditation with the children. And I learned that I need to learn a lot, that I need to detach myself from the result of things that I do because I had one class and it went very well because I had the feeling I elevated them. They went out, they were very joyful and everything. And the second class, I, I was like, hmm. So I learned a lot of this talk today that first of all, I still need to learn a lot. <laughs> Secondly, I need to detach myself from the results of yes. what I am doing. And there's still a third thing <laughs> uh, that I don't as well need to doubt. Because what you said about the doubt as well, I need to just transcend it and, and see it a different way. But I learned, and I'm grateful for it. So I'm very grateful for, for this lesson that I learned today because I had this talk and then I had the talk of Melanie. So it all went together and she used some things that I thought I could have used it in the less about the tapas and the peas and everything. And oh my God, and I didn't talk about it. So I have still so many things to look forward to. Oh, I'm so, so pleased. So, that's my you. lesson of today. <laughs> and this one, but a really nice one. Thank so, you, thank you. And you were a great student. You were a great student, so enthusiastic. I've got a very good teacher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, what have you learned from today? I'm going to go around the room again. <laughs> <laughs> this is really dealing with your emotions. Are we talking about dealing with your emotions? Correct? Let's bring it to now. Well, you know mine is just to continue to practice. Yeah. Stop making excuses. Yeah, good one. It's good you know this, huh? Yes, I know. Thank and you. I doubt myself and I know when I'm doing it. So there is no excuse, as I keep saying. So just to get back on track again after the summer. It's been a bit of a crazy summer, but good. Like, I'm not, no complaints. So um, I need to get back. Slip from ground gained. <laughs> it's great to hear those words. Yeah, you go next. Oh, what have I learned from today? I've realised how, um, if I may say, how well I'm doing. Yes, sorry. <laughs> that's no, that's good. Um, it's also good to know when you do something well. Because before the summer, I got the job. After a long time, I wasn't working. I was really worried how is it going to be. But with all the knowledge, I'm actually. I have to say that I'm enjoying it every minute and it's quite difficult because the people are different than me. In the beginning they were laughing, they, they knew from somewhere else that I'm uh, practicing yoga and so they were laughing at me in the beginning like oh and this and that but I, w I was very calm about it. Good. And, and I feel that I'm bringing yoga into work. Oh. So, so, so I'm not saying about that. She has Sorry to interrupt you. Not talking about it, but applying into my uh, way of behaving, not getting angry with anything, like when people judging me or not judging myself. And uh, so when you were talking about what. Um, when, we, when you were talking now, I was going through the whole three months now and I'm, I, I'm proud of myself that Good. I'm beat by beat. I can't say that I'm doing it perfectly well, but I, are you every, happy? I'm, I'm very happy. That's it. Very and happy. you are doing yes. well. Every day I feel that something else clicks in. Yeah, that's... and you got and it. I understand this and I understand that and I understand I feel like today I understand everything, but tomorrow probably I'll, I'll understand more, so... <laughs> ah, good! <laughs> good way to look at it. It's, I'm well, happy, so, thank you so much, Nana. Oh, for nothing, yeah, that's good. You worked very hard from the Beata I knew, what was it, three, four years ago? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. yes Always absolutely. complaining about everything. What a difference! <laughs> <laughs> it's really amazing. What a oh, big so difference! Oh, what a big difference! Yeah, you took it from I, away from the I. Yeah, 
there's no I. They're okay. always working on the living dot now. Perfect. And it, it's it's working. It really is working. What a change. And everybody at the center in Gibraltar is so grateful to you. I hear only nice things about you. It makes me really happy when I hear nice things about people. Can they, you know they're practicing? <laughs> you know? Oh, man, did they, you know that? Uh, see, I found out right away. Because good, good word from our centers. Hopefully this one too, it spreads like wildfire. When somebody does something good, it spreads. We're going to change the tide of the world, right? We're not going to spread things that go bad, we spread things that go good. I told my niece who works as production manager in CNN, she met us as well, and I said, Chrissy, you need to, you know, put more good stories on on CNN. And she, they are, you know, they, the story, I don't know if you watch the news, but she sent me a couple of clips about somebody who paid for a mother who had a special needs uh, child at the restaurant, they paid the bill. You read it, it's yeah. been all over the internet, yeah. apparently. I said, look, I don't have time for looking at the internet. Just send me any positive articles that you put on CNN. I don't want to know the rest. And I said, stop putting in more. So it's going to happen. They're doing it. They're doing it. Every bit helps. These little stories, ordinary stories with ordinary people. Liz. Um, it's nice to be back and it's nice to be listening to. Um, what I'm observing really is that the mind is attached to logic. Wow, you know we had a student like you in Gibraltar once, the mind is so attached to logic. Yeah, I mean everybody thinks that there must be an explanation for everything that's happening in their lives. Yes, correct. I mean, hello. You know, I don't, I don't think that's so. No, it isn't. Yeah. Can't. It can't be. Look at the universe. It's so expansive. Everybody, most, so many people think this is the only Earth. Mm. Impossible. So it cannot be. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, right. That uh, I think keeping it simple and just trust the universe and having patience and non attachment and no expectation, I think everything will be okay. That's what I think. Just Perfect. Keep it simple. Keep well. it simple. Yeah. Keep and having it simple. patience and everything will be okay. It will be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Glad definitely not to get attached to the emotions because they are not us. They come and go. So how can they be us? They come and go. Um, and that's the reason we are here in this world. We have a physical body and the mind. Because we are learning, we have something to learn. If we didn't have anything to learn, we wouldn't be here. It's the it's the karma. So we are still in the cycle of karma. That's why we have to experience the negative negative um, emotions because we have to learn from them. That's why we are here. Absolutely. So let's enjoy the negative and the positive. Comes it's and good. Goes. Enjoy the negative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really a of negative. Yeah, and yeah, once you start to enjoy the negative, well, you know, I really had a bad day. It's quite funny. <laughs> you know, I lost it again. It's not negative anymore. Yeah. It disappears. It's really, hard. it is like that. It's and how we perceive it. Yes, it's all in the mind. Correct. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, two things. First of all, um, about keeping it simple, and what I was saying earlier, with this um, event I was, um, I'm planning on organising. It happens quite a lot. I get a bit overwhelmed, like, because I think about all the detail. And my husband always says to me, "Keep it simple, stupid." That's what he says about everything. <laughs> so he keeps reminding me about that. And the other thing. I'd quickly like to share with you um, a few weeks, which is about non-attachment, and it's a really material thing, but it was a massive uh, lesson and great practice for me. Um, at the beginning of August, I was so desperate to do uh, to go to yoga class. Mara wasn't on, and Maria wasn't around, um, and I just and I'm not very good at doing yoga at home. Um, so I decided to go for a run anyway. I just think I really need some yoga practice. I got back from uh, my run and um, the diamond in my uh, engagement ring had fell out. <coughs> and I, I mean, I've had it less than a year. And it was just, I just loved it and it wasn't insured. So I was just like devastated. But um, I was amazed at how, um, how far I'd come. And I was so proud of myself and my yoga practice. And that was like, I couldn't have had better yoga practice than uh, losing that. Wow, that's oh, great. Wow. But I still haven't, um, my husband wants to buy me another one. 
but I don't want you to. Why? Because I feel like that money could go to charity or it could go somewhere else. So I'm, I still feel like I'm, uh, I, it hasn't, the solution hasn't... Okay, what is a perfect action? One that causes no, no harm, harm to, to anyone. anyone. Some, some benefit to someone, yourself, yourself included. included. So if he would like to give that to you, Give him the pleasure. It's very lucky. <laughs> me. You can. You can. And look, this is my husband's diamond ring, which I made into the necklace. I'm enjoying it. You know, I learned that great lesson many, many years ago, and I'll tell you that, and I hope it helps you to be very clear about it. I went to India, and there were so many poor people. I went with mom and dad. And dad had given all this money and a huge check, and we bought clothes, and we went to visit these, this orphanage where this lovely woman, who I called an angel from heaven, was teaching all these children in a really horrible place. It was horrible, but that's all she had. So I went there, gave them all the children clothes, and as I was walking out, I had a, what was it, a Raymond Whale diamond watch that my father had given me, you know? And I was just about to, my father was just there, I'm going to give my watch. I'm going to give it to her to sell it. And he stopped me. He said, don't. Want. I said, Dad, why? I want to give everything away. I don't want any of it. He said, that is also attachment. He said, I gave you that watch. Nobody will buy you a watch like that. It makes me very happy. You're my daughter. To see you wear a beautiful watch. It looks nice in your hand. Why don't you think you deserve that? If you give the watch to that woman to sell, one, you won't get the money I spent on it. <laughs> Two, they don't know how to deal with so much money. They're not used to it. They use it for all the wrong things. They won't appreciate it. On your hand, it's full of love. Ever since that day, I realized you can have anything if there's no attachment either way. Do you see what I'm saying? No attachment either way. You know, many times in the Western world, there's so much guilt around wealth as well. Oh, I could do this. Yes, you could. And if it was necessary, you could have that diamond ring, sell it, and maybe do the good. But at the moment, you are living here with your husband, and if he wants to give it to you, why not? It'll make him richer. My mother had everything, but my father, working so hard, had so much abundance to give her everything, plus the world everything, plus his children everything. So allow your husband the permission of being abundant. And enjoy it, because the more abundant you feel, the more money will come to you, and the more, like Sintel said, I am the one who can pass the money on beautifully. Money is just an energy. Things are just an energy. Your lesson is non-attachment. You learned it. Because you lost it, but you didn't get so upset and you didn't say, buy me a new one. Because you learned it, the universe wants to give you another one. Do you mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and when my father said that to me, and it really also made me realize one really great thing. How much more does the universe of God or the divine want to give me things? My master said one thing to me, Melanie, you know how to give. Learn how to receive. Balance. So I hope I answered your Thank question. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> well, if you should lose it again, not meant for you. That's it. Hopefully <laughs> someone who needs it. Yeah. That's yeah. the way, yeah. yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The way but if you want to buy it for you, I it tomorrow. What a nice husband. What a nice husband. Give him a big hug and say thank you. That is so kind, so wonderful that he wants to do it for you. He's feeling pretty guilty that he hasn't been sure to do it. So, yeah. 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 so let him buy it. He heals everybody, you see? He heals everybody. And this time he'll insure it. So mm -hmm. be happy. <laughs> Esther. Well, I, you know, all, all this just reassured me. I mean, today's class, it really reassured me on, 
on all the issues I've just um, said and everything I've been doing throughout the summer and I was really looking forward to today's class because I've missed everybody and I've missed you and your teachings and look forward to what's coming you know for all this year but it was quite funny that um, before I came to the class I thought normally even after from one week to the other it was like you're running out of petrol and you need to go and recharge and I thought funny I really go there because I look forward to learning more and everything but I'm not going, it's the first time I'm not going to Nalanis with this sensation that I need to recharge. Fantastic, mm -hmm. so you have, you're just coming here to enjoy yeah. Yeah, each and learn, other. And learn, mm -hmm. to learn, but not recharge, not to grab in a, in a needy way, but just to really just learn. Just to grow, just yeah. to grow. Thank you, that's thank lovely. You. Thank you, no, thank you. Come along. Well, I'm still learning on attachment. I put my iPhone in the washing machine today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if an uh, upgraded one will appear. <laughs> <laughs> and no, why not? Yeah. And why not? It why just not? came out dead, and I, I did fudge a lot. Fudge, 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 you know, instead of like we do. <laughs> <laughs> But from today... Fudge means fudge? You no, know. the bad words. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Fudge. Oh, I don't we know. Do okay. It was, it was loud. <laughs> we do. Loud fudging. It was loud fudging. We do fudge. They don't swear. No. They use okay. fudge oh, instead. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that aside, from today, I picked up what you said in the meeting. You said... Uh, give them another chance because I do need patience with giving other people another chance. I get bored and I get fed up and I'm like, oh, enough, you know. So that I've learned it a bit today. Okay, thank you. Constantly give people yeah, chances. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Patience. If they're good. Yeah, I know some people that <laughs> do the wrong things, just like, forget it. Yeah. But this is for a good cause. Yeah, oh, I know, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Ale. I'm proud of myself as well. Great. I am really proud of myself because. Me too. Thank you. <coughs> this wow, last, this, that's this. big, Kamala. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, from such a deep place this time. Yeah. I always love it. You're always proud of it, but there's always been a little something. But today was so truthful, yeah. so deep. Thank you. Sorry. Just came out. <laughs> <laughs> no, this last, uh, it's almost a year now, I've really gone for it. Full speed ahead, taking all the risks, taking all the danger, taking all the hard work, standing up for what I believe in. And I saw this quote, uh, this is not, I hope not, will be not taken big headed, but this is from my soul. That uh, it was a quote from <coughs> Bob Marley. And it said that I'm a simple man with a simple wish. I just want to unite mankind. Yeah. And this is what I, my whole life I've been, I have had no idea how to do this. I felt very small and in, inimportant or unimportant. And, and now I found the door to do it. And uh, now I've been, for the last uh, eight, nine months, I don't know, Six, something like that. I've been on radio shows all over the world, standing up against, uh, uh, I'm totally not interested in politics, but standing up for human rights, standing up for what is true, standing up for these things. And every time before it, many of these things have been live, and when you're on live radio, or live whatever, anything can happen. And the attacks can be really vicious, and also there's no way of knowing what goes out how it will be received and I'm, I've been so grateful to you and Guru Dev because every single time <clears throat> I've been talking to the bearded guy over there saying please guide my words please let me be, be an instrument of peace, of peace please let my words make a difference and I <clears throat> I've been afraid before that all the knowledge that I've collected over 30 years of, of information about things that have not been very pretty uh, in different conspiracies and different terror 
acts and uh, murders and assassinations. I don't know what I've been looking into. Uh, I've been, at times I've been afraid that what, what I've been collecting, if I exposed it, that it would really hurt, you know, that people might commit suicide when the truth came out about these things and that, that I would really hurt people instead of what I, I want healing, you know. And I tell you, I've had so many beautiful emails from all over the world, not one single one negative, not a negative word, just absolute beauty coming back. I, I'm just so grateful for, so for being I'm able to... I about you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. I'm so grateful to, to hear those words. And also, if I can just... Just uh, one more minute. It's also that in that world, there's a lot of experts who knows about these things, who's trying to get it out there. But I feel that I'm one of the few that comes from love, that does not want to hit back, that does not ask for re revenge or, you know, string them up or hit back or anything like that. And I think you must be the only one. I think so too. At the moment, I am. I do think you're. The I am. I know that. I, so you're but, a great example. And this, this is why it's coming back so beautifully, you know. And people, there's, uh, there's one researcher that I was on his show, and I thought, my God, he can eat me alive. This guy, if he wants to, he's really quite a bully. Aggressive. Yeah, aggressive in many ways. I came on his show, I stood up, and I, you know, I just did like this. He embraced me like this, and afterwards he said, because he's in a very dangerous situation at the moment, and now I can share it with him, and he said, he, he said I was a godsend for someone perfect to stand. Ahimsa, uh, mm. Perfect ahimsa. Perfect ahimsa. By the practice of non-violence, all hostilities cease. And that is also why I feel safe, even though I go into risky areas. Mm. Keep the now practice. Yes. Yeah. Keep that practice. Can I say something as well? Ole, I've never wanted to know anything about these things in, in my life because they, it hurts me so much. Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> but now I want to know through you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. May you really <laughs> enlighten so many souls. We were born to do this work. We always knew it. Thank you. Yeah. But with non-violence, with non-violence. We are not a Gandhi, non-violence. You might get shot in the end, but I we did it not. Lemon! I know. You show those earrings. Something, but Kavi was old anyway. He lived a beautiful life. Mm. He gave his entire life. I think that's a perfect way to die mm. so quickly, so beautifully. He gave his own life. We all have to go one way or the other anyway. Mm. But uh, you're doing it in the best way possible. And really, really take care of yourself, though. Thank you. I do worry about you. I send you lots of light. <laughs> so many crazy Thank people you. in the world. Yeah, Thank it you. is. I do. I think about it. Because it is a bit crazy, that world, but uh, keep going much. with life. Thank you. you were born to do it. What can you do? I can do it. Not your choice. It was yeah. your, your nature. Like Arjuna saying, do it with love. Thank you. Uh, I've learned that I still have a lot to learn. Um, I've learned that with anger, it's very difficult to forgive. But as soon as you do it, the anger goes. Um, and I've learnt the value of balance um, rather than the sort of extreme, somebody else was talking about it, of, you know, that adrenaline and then nothing, which is mostly how I've lived in my life. And um, it's getting better and easier every day, so I'm very grateful. Oh, I'm so grateful too. It's nice to hear those words. Thomas? Anything you want to say? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can? Oh. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. 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 Well, um, I've got pretty burnt out this summer, so I have learned that I'm going to, I'm going to try to be kind to myself. Um, obviously, a lot of things have happened over the last few weeks. I find it really hard. I think I've just done too much. You're tired, you need a break. Yeah. You need a rest. I feel not like coming to India. Maybe come to Portugal for a little bit. See how you feel. You need a break. You're tired. Yeah, I've I've just kept going on all so I pile up. And uh, <clears throat> not giving myself anything. I need to take time for me now. Yes, you really do. Mm. It's good that you learned that. Mm. You're a hard worker, you know, but you need yeah, to learn. Yeah, I do much. And, um, yeah, I've just done too much and burnt myself out. Uh, and I'm like quite a, like a perfectionist and that. <laughs> I like things to run the way I want them to and I'm, I need to stop that. And I know that it's, but it's built up and built up and it's come to like breaking point yesterday. But um, I'm ready now. Good for you. Yeah, I was okay before and then it, as I say, it's built up over the summer and, and I realised what's happened. Um, but I, I'm, I feel good now. I look better. So I'm going to work on myself now, get into a routine and, uh, you know, put me first, I think. In this case, you do need to do that now, yeah. before you can repair it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And you're going through a lot of emotions, mm -hmm. so yeah. you need some respite time to... Yeah, I've been up there and down yeah. there. Yeah, too much. Yeah. yeah. Too much. <laughs> Tom, down there. Steve. Well, as regards emotions, emotions uh, I'm a, a work in progress, but uh, I used, before I used to be a very angry person a lot of the time, but... Uh, I've got to the stage now where I can nip that thought in the bud before it turns into anger. Wonderful. Um, you can see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he looks and he glows, doesn't he? Look, yeah. Yeah. He looks very light. You look very light. Yes, he looks younger. <laughs> That's what I thought today. That's exactly what I thought. Both of you, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look younger. I haven't seen you for three months. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Alana. Oh, emotions. That's my subject for tonight, for today, for the most of my life. So yeah, I had a lot of aha moments when you were talking. And uh, I'm riding a tidal wave at the moment in my life. So um, every time I get distracted during the day, I try to focus. Um, I only had one question because my emotions. I understand that they come from um, from the thoughts, but um, actually, like I have swallowed during years my emotions. So, and what I do, I, I let them out. Um, Some way midway is the right way. Okay. Yeah, somewhere. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Somewhere yeah. midway. And then I stop the emotion, and then. Try to focus again. Restrain now. Yes. Say the emotion without ah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Say okay. it with a piece and yes. you can express an emotion, but you don't have to get carried by it. Yes. I don't like what you did. I don't like what you did. Do you see there's a difference? Yes. I don't like what you did. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to swallow you. Yes. Okay? Midway. Thank you. Please. Right, yeah, um, I'm so glad that I come here. Um, is, it, is it Tom? Tony. Yeah, Tony, Tony. Um, Thank you. I've been suffering from anxiety for a number of years. Um, depression, I've had a drug problem in the past. And just listening to you for the first 20 minutes, my whole body was tingling. You know? Um, so. Thank you. It's okay, we understand. 
I'm thinking first like about four years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I put it at such low self-esteem about myself. Uh, sorry, it's been really, really intense. Um, so I'm just trying to work through that now. So I'm, I mean, probably on and off for 20 years, drug abuse, violence, prison. <laughs> it's taken a lot out of me. Of course it has. It's exhausting. Yeah. It's totally exhausting. Mm -hmm. So if you need any help at all, you know, I see people, many people here can help you in this room as well. Mm -hmm. Many of them have great talents. Any help at all, just ask. You're not alone. Mm -hmm. Ole is here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ole is here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and just, just call, send an email. Okay. I got it right this time, the email. <laughs> so, uh, and, and you know, we can talk. And there's a way. And I, I think coming to these Tuesdays will help you see yourself. Yeah. 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 Maybe give you clues on how to get out of that. Yeah. And start coming to the yoga in the evening and doing some meditation and stuff. Because it's the thoughts that are killing me. Yeah. Was... And that's what you need. You need some respite. Yeah. yeah. Respite from all that. T -t 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 oh, it's definitely. Yeah. It drives you nuts that. There's anybody. And that's probably why the drugs, you know, the abuse back and forth. If you can learn to quieten this, then. Exactly. Well, we're growing up. Um, well, first of all, I never felt loved by my parents, so then I saw love from the streets, and basically everyone was smoking pot, and it was ecstasy, and it was cocaine, so basically I just went along with the crowd, football violence, and just that's how it was. And I moved away, and I went to America for 12 years, and I got into the meditation and yoga, and I was doing really good, and I got back into an English crowd again, and everyone was doing cocaine and stuff and ecstasy, and I got back into it again. And I ended up doing a big prison sentence and getting deported back to the UK. And lo and behold, everyone's been doing it in the UK as well. Oh, and, gosh. Yeah. oh gosh. And it's just basically all I knew. And I got back into it as well. And luckily, I found a lovely woman and we had a beautiful daughter together and everything stopped. But of course, that's when all the anxiety and the depression started because all the drugs was all of basically all I've known. You know what I mean? Yeah. Staying yeah. up for three or four days partying and now everything stopped. It's just more so everything has gone happy. Yeah. We can help you. Honest. Steve also had a bad background and look at him now. Yeah. Wonderful human being. Fabulous. <laughs> you know, when he told us some of the things his parents did to us gave me a shock. I think I just wanted to cry my eyes out. But I didn't till after he left. <laughs> <laughs> But it does, you know, and what you're going through can really feel it, you know. I think all of us in this room are feeling you so strongly yeah. and that you are so brave to say it and so honest. Yeah. Shows that you're going I to mean, feel I'm it. a very emotional person anyway, but I have been through a hell of a, hell of a lot, but, you know, I'm, I'm glad I've come through the other end and I'm clean now and, you know what I mean, I've got yeah. a beautiful daughter and I live in a lovely country. And beautiful. Wanted. And you're going to maintain that yeah, and make it even definitely. better. I want to be able to look in the mirror and say, yeah, I like what I'm looking at. Yeah. It's not like, oh, God, it's like you. <laughs> and you will. Yeah. Guaranteed. I can see it. Mm -hmm. Can't you all see it? Yeah, no, yeah, see yeah. it so clearly. I have been there before. Like, so you'll get again. Yeah, no, you just slipped from ground gained. Yeah. <laughs> Join the <laughs> things uh, during the summer I went to visit my mom all the time when she was already in the nursing home and uh, can you speak just a little louder I don't think they can hear <laughs> my doctors <laughs> <laughs> um, she became unreasonable once in a while because of the medicine she was taking and I missed a wonderful opportunity to uh, burn some karma so now I've got some self forgiving to do not nice at all. So uh, that we brought out quite at the beginning. Um, very nice thing uh, have been happening since October last year. I've been working on my book and 
I, I watched Bashar a lot from YouTube. Um, especially I love the part follow your highest excitement, work with heart. It was uh, work hard, then work smart, and now the new paradigm is work with heart. And that has been my safe haven. We were talking about that as well. Um, the, the great samples of this man who uh, want to work to give away the money. Well, I, I don't know why it excites me so, but I have to follow the lead. And then you were talking about the DAOs. <laughs> Honestly, the book is going to be tremendously expensive. But I, I follow my excitement. And, uh, Follow your excitement. That's it. And uh, there was another realization. I still come here for a weekly recharge. Oh, that's <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Chiva. Well, my, a lot of people said that it's uh, great to be back. Um, lovely ambience and place, and it's nice to see friendly faces. Um, I've just been trying to work on myself. Um, the, to try and find inner peace and things like this and not to have a go at myself all the time for the things that I do. Or, um, but the one thing I wanted to ask you was, I've, I'm generally a loving person, but uh, I have, behind my house is a, a field where the guy keeps horses, doesn't look after them properly, he's got goats, he's got 16 denounces against him for animals. And I just, and my feelings towards that person aren't, Spiritual, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I saved a dog. Uh, he had to, there's there's two feed sheds right behind as well. One, he had a dog in there for it must have been about four weeks. So I must have managed to rescue it in the end. But Ugh. I just don't know what goes on in these people's minds. And what do you do? Well, yeah. Well, well it's one thing I like to do that person, but it's not spiritual. <laughs> is it? I mean, am I bad for thinking that way or? No, because these people are not good people. And he's married to an English woman as well, I just don't understand that. Well, don't try to think so much about them. This is what I would say for one. I wouldn't spend a lot of my time to thinking about I would disregard the, the wicked. You have done what you can do, saving the animals. And, um, you know, I, I just flood him every day. Less, I know what you don't, you know you don't like him. Not a good person. But sometimes he doesn't come water the horses. I'm going out there at night watering the horses because they're all around. That's why God and sent well you done. there for the horses. Well, yeah, well done. <laughs> well done, yes. The, uh, you no, were I'm sent. I'm sorry for the animals. It's not their fault. Thank God. Thank God. I heard a comment like, no, oh, they can go two or three days without water. It's, there's no food in the field, you know. It's just. So that's why so you're the next them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing it. You're doing it. You are doing it. Of course you're going to be. It's wrong what this man is doing. But don't let him. My thoughts are wrong towards him as well. But pardon, pardon? My thoughts towards him are wrong as well. No, he's not a good person. Change it to he's not a good person. Accept it and drop it. He isn't a good person, but don't make it go worse. Like, I want to do this to him. He should die. All those things. He's been for. Don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. He's not a good person. Person, full stop. Sri Patanjali tells us very clearly how do you deal with people like that? Disregard the wicked. wicked. Don't give them good energy, don't give them bad energy, right. don't give them Ignore. any energy. Yes. It's gonna something's gonna happen to the guy by itself. Sixteen denunciations. denunciation, so he's a little bit out of Everybody's hands as well. They don't really ignore that in the Spanish countryside. They seem to ignore that. Well, well that, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. you know, you cannot. I know. It's, it's just. I know. It's frustrating. You, you should suffer. suffer. Yeah. But that's you it. You're doing all you can. Thank you. I can show you some pictures yeah. of the dog. Correct. I mean, the dog was like a skeleton boy. That, that's four weeks ago, and he's, you know, he's a uh, good cano. He's down in the linear dog stone. Good for you. Look how many animals you save in your life. Yeah, so Think about that. Focus on the animals. Yeah, focus on the animals. Like, uh, Disregard them. Yeah, thank you. 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 Thank you.
just can't we, she has bucked all afternoon. No. <laughs> just for you. Thank you. <laughs> Money. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not really the angry person. I'm more to the sad side. And I have been doing a lot of this. But I'm also proud of myself because I'm eight pages away from finishing studying the Bhagavad Gita and I've learned so much. Oh, you were studying the Bhagavad Gita. And wonderful, and wonderful. And one thing, um, I remember we talked about it during my course with Spurs Pratt. <laughs> Three years ago. Many, many, many years ago now. Is it seven years ago? Seven years, ago? Uh, uh, seven years uh, teaching here. And, oh and you God. said, what is God to you? And I have been <coughs> taking it into deep meditation. I have searched for the answer for a long, long time. But studying the Bhagavad Gita, now I feel inside that I feel it. But, uh, and um, one emotion that makes me sad is it's difficult to see how horrible the earth is. Yeah. <coughs> and um, I have had a lot of knowledge also uh, about what Buddha had been studying for many years and it had been very heavy also to face how cruel war can be. And um, it's just so reason. Uh, and I'm just trying to get more into it, but the doors have opened for me to see that God is everything. Correct. Everything. <coughs> so God is also bigger than that, and it's bigger than my little emotions and ego taking me here and there, and my fears and, and worries about the world, because it's so much bigger. That is You're so welcome. Surrender to that great force. There will always be evil and there will always be good. Disregard the evil, for it will take the joy out of your life. And you don't deserve that. Both of you have that thing, disregard it. It's there. No, it's there. That's it. And bring in good. And bring in good. Do good, be good every day. The more good you do, the less evil there is. But I've had to go deep with the other thing too, because remember you said you need to go deep, you can't just keep on surfacing all the time. So I thought, <laughs> You're good okay, I, have to go, I have to go deeper because then, unless I go deep, I can't, I can't bypass it, I can't surrender it, I can't transcend this, you know, I have to go deeper. So, yeah, I'm working on it and I'm Studying the Gita is great. And, and I'm They'll open many doors for you. <laughs> many doors for you. And I might come far to, to come here, but I'm not going to give up on this. Thank you. Mm. Do you know, I really, do you know how far know. she comes I every know. week? Benal Martina. Benal Martina. Yeah. yeah. But she I'm really so happy in Spain. I can be so close to you. I was hoping to see you in Swindon. <laughs> I go, Lakshmi, and there's a Facebook message. I got it in my email. I said, I don't know the phone number, I don't know, you know, addresses, I just get taken to places. Answer right away. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Kirsty, thank you. Well, I've managed to let go of quite a big attachment in my life, um, which has brought me some new energy. Great. Lots of clarity and good and bad. But I'm continuing with it, and I hope it just stays like that at the moment. <laughs> you look like you know you're taking the right decision. It looks like it from her face. Whatever you've let go, it seems to be doing you good. Yeah, I'm enjoying it at the moment. Sometimes it's a bit. It's like a bit having a mirror in front of me because I was living in a bit of a cloudy land before, and the clouds have kind of dispersed now, so I can see more than I could before. So. Uh, <coughs> staying there in that space. Good for you.
good for you. Wow, thank you for all those lovely, lovely stories. You know, I love this. For me, it's the most interesting part of my work. <laughs> <laughs> Watching everybody, and you know, each one is a book. Can you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Each one is a book. How can anybody say they're better than anybody else? Each one is this perfect video and has a story to tell at the end of the day. Tell it well so your children learn well. <coughs> tell it well. Learn from your mistakes that they learn to, from their mistakes, or whoever you are in touch with. It's great, great.